look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Soft, melt-in-your-mouth meat and thick, gorgeous gravy. The perfect casserole. But when I try and make this at home, it just doesn't cut the mustard. Can science tell me what I'm doing wrong and help me get it right? In search of tips to ensure my casseroles are more hit than miss, I'm heading to London Metropolitan University to meet food scientist Dr Sue Bailey. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. So, can you teach me the art of making the perfect casserole? I'd be delighted to. First, choose the correct cut of meat. What is the best cut of meat for a casserole? Well, the best cut of meat actually is the cheaper cuts of meat. That's which good news. It's very good <laughs> news, yes. I mean, something like this, for example, which is brisket. So where is the brisket from? It's from part of the shoulder of the animal. So quite muscly. So quite muscly, so anything that's been working very hard and has got a lot of connective tissue in it. Why do you want connective tissue? That just doesn't sound yummy at all. Well, connective <laughs> tissue, when you cook it, breaks down and then makes you a nice thick casserole. That is so interesting because in the past I've got rid of these bits because they just don't look very tasty. Next up, brown the meat. In order to actually get a really well-flavoured casserole, you must brown your meat. Now, a lot of people think that's to sort of sear and seal the outside of the meat. Yes, lock in the juices. Lock in the juices. Well, actually, no, that's not what it's there for. What you actually need to do is start off a reaction called the Maillard reaction. If you've got a small amount of sugars in the meat, reacting with the protein in the meat, and then creating a whole load of new taste molecules. Rule three, add the correct amount of stock. You need to add enough water to just cover the meat. It would dry out otherwise. Yeah, about right. That's about right. Now, choose the right dish. What is most important is that you have a lid. So it doesn't really matter what you use as long as there is a lid and it fits tightly. What you want is no steam to escape during the cooking process. You want to retain all the flavours in your casserole dish. Finally, it's the all-important cooking time. Now, I've always believed cooking for longer equals a better casserole. And this time, instead of telling me what's best, Dr. Sue's devised an experiment so we can measure the differences accurately. We're cooking three identical casseroles, all at a relatively low temperature. Check the temperature. OK. So, it says 140. Perfect. One will be cooked for an hour and a half, one for four hours, and one for eight hours. Which will come out best? You have to get to this sort of magic zone within a casserole, and that is where you get the connective tissue beginning to break down, turning into gelatin, and then giving a really nice mouth feel. OK. Ooh, Ooh that looks very good. That smells amazing. We take the meat to the lab for scientific testing. A compression test is done with a texture analyzer, which measures the meat's tenderness. A vacuum oven analyzes moisture content. Now, the moment of truth. So this is the 90 minutes, so that's 58% moisture. This is the four hours cooking time with 61% moisture. So you can see that the moisture level has gone up. But in fact, for the eight hour cook, it's gone down quite a lot. It's clear that our four hour casserole has the most moisture, meaning it's the most succulent. And the four hour bake also results in the most tender meat. Why does cooking time affect the meat so much? Well, what's actually happened in the casserole that's only been cooked for an hour and a half is that there's not enough time for the connective tissue to break down into the lovely silky gelatin in there. Yes, because you can see it's still very hard. This one, however, that's been cooked for eight hours, there's not much gravy, everything is quite burnt. What you've had here is a secondary breakdown of the proteins. The muscle fibres have actually broken apart. I've always thought the longer you cook a casserole for, the better and better it gets. No, 
that's not true. So this one that was cooked for four hours is pretty much perfect. The meat falls apart really easily, the flavour is delicious, the vegetables are still intact. I mean, it's bang on. Exactly. They say that you can't rush a good casserole, but it turns out longer isn't always better. Finally, I have the secret to making the perfect casserole.